Hi Year 7, we're starting our new biology topic today with the topic of feeding relationships. Now feeding relationships is something you've probably encountered before in primary science when you've been looking at food chains and possibly even food webs. So we're going to start off today by doing this Kahoot, playing against your classmates to see how much you remember from your previous work in science. Please everyone now, I'll put up the pin and join the Kahoot so we can play. So now that we've refreshed our memories about what we already know on this subject, we're going to look at today's learning objectives. We've got quite a bit of vocabulary that's vital to this topic. We need to be able to understand and use the terms producer, consumer, both primary and secondary, and we'll look at tertiary, and decomposer. We'll then look at the interdependence of organisms in the environment in terms of their feeding relationships by being able to both draw and interpret food chains and food webs. So we're going to start off by consolidating what we should understand already about food chains. Because a food chain shows how animals depend on other plants and animals for their food and survival. A food chain can tell us about what animals eat and what they are eaten by. And it also allows us to see how the flow of energy is passed on from one species in a food chain to another. Some nice easy ones to start with today, everyone. OK, so what does a cow eat? Is it grass? Is it cereal? Or is it mice? Put your answers in the chat. And yes, as I'm sure we'd all been able to predict, it was grass. Let's look at the next one. Now let's consider what a tiger eats. Do you think that's also going to be grass? Put your answers into our class chat. And you're correct. It's not grass this time. It's got to be one of the other things. Let's think about the environment where a tiger lives. Is it on land or at sea? Yes, it's on land, so it's going to be the deer. The next one we're looking at is what does a lion eat? The choices here, we have fish, grasshopper or zebra. What do you think? Yes, you're correct. This time it's going to be a zebra. And our final easy revision food web question, what does a shark eat? This time we're looking at the aquatic environment. So it's going to be, yes, you've got it, fish. So let's go over the key components of a food chain. This is an example of a simple food chain. We have seeds, we have a shrew, which is like a small rodent, and a fox. The arrows in a food chain show the direction in which energy is transferred. Now this is a common mistake when constructing your own food webs or food chains. The arrow shows the transfer of energy. It does not show what eats what. The seeds do not eat the shrew. The shrew is eating the seeds. But that means that the energy that's contained within the seeds is eaten by and transferred to the shrew. So always remember, the arrow is telling us the direction of transfer of energy. Now I'm going to show you how to construct a simple food chain and then how to adapt it into a simple food web. The main thing to remember when we are drawing any food chain or food web is that all energy at the beginning comes from, do you know where? Yes, you've got it, the sun. So let's start off by drawing the sun for ourselves just now. Apologies for my art. This is why I'm your science teacher, not your art teacher, but hopefully we can all recognize that as a lovely little sun image for us there, okay? Now, after the sun, we need to have something that's known as a producer in order to convert the light energy from the sun into a food source. That food source can only be created by the process that's very specific to plants. Can you remember the name of that chemical process? It's converting the energy from the sun and some other chemicals which it takes from the environment and changing them into a source of food. Yes, that's right, it is photosynthesis, which we learned about in an earlier topic. So looking at our list that we have here, we need to choose a plant which is able to photosynthesize. And the one that I've got here is this plant, a little flower represented here. OK, so I'm going to put that next in my chain. The energy transferring means that I need to show the energy transferring from the sun to the flower, I'm going to represent that by an arrow. Remembering the arrow goes in the direction of transfer of the energy, so from the sun to the plant. 
And let's now label the plant as our producer. So what's going to come next? What from the options we've got across the top here do we think is going to eat the producer and have the energy transferred to it? That's right, it's going to be the rabbit. So we'll move the rabbit down to the end of the energy transferred from this arrow and then let's label that as our primary consumer, remembering that primary means first. So it's the first consumption by an animal of the energy produced by the producer. Now we need to look and find our secondary consumer. The rabbit eats the plant, but who is going to eat the rabbit? One option here is our fox. So let's move that into place on the food chain. I'll put the fox here. We also need to add in our arrow showing the transfer of energy from the rabbit to the fox and to label the fox as our secondary consumer. We're just labeling them here. Secondary consumer is the fox. And now we have a completed food chain. What we've created so far is a food chain. Now we're going to add a bit more information and see if we can create a food web. Let's take this mouse, okay? A mouse is another small creature like the rabbit who will eat uh, the producer. So energy will transfer from the producer to the mouse. So I'm going to add the mouse here and then get ourselves a label and connect it into the existing food web. So we'll have an arrow going from the producer to the mouse. Now let's think, does anyone else eat the mouse? Might the fox eat the mouse? So let's do a line from fox from mouse to fox, showing the transfer of energy there. In this food web, the mouse is also a primary consumer as it eats the producer. So I'll label this mouse as well. And then finally in this food web, this owl that we have here, he eats the mouse as his main diet. So I'm going to add him in and then with an arrow showing the transfer of energy from the mouse to the owl. That means that the owl is also a secondary consumer. This is one example of a food web showing the interrelationships and the feeding relationships of the animals within an environment. Within this food web we can see the predators and the prey as well. When we're considering animal species, creatures that get eaten or are doing the eating, then we have specific titles for them, words that you may have heard before in science. The prey is the thing that gets eaten, so the mouse is the prey of the owl, or the rabbit is the prey of the fox. The predator is the animal which hunts, kills, and eats the other animal. So we would say that our fox and our owl here are predators. Typically, secondary and tertiary consumers will be predators, primary consumers, and sometimes secondary consumers can also be prey. Tertiary consumers are likely always to be the predator. Now I'd like your class teams to go to your breakout rooms and try this match and draw challenge. You need to try and match each keyword to the correct definition and be ready to share your work when you're finished. Before you get started on today's main worksheet task, I want to go through the following key points. The source of all the energy in a food chain or food web is this energy, the radiation from the sun. It's made useful by plants and also algae that can produce organic compounds through photosynthesis. They produce glucose. The living organisms then use the energy to be able to produce further biomass and grow. And when a living organism is consumed, some of that biomass and energy is transferred. It's important to note that at each stage, each arrow in a food web, some of the energy is lost. 100% of the energy is not transferred, usually because 100% of the animal is not eaten or plant is not eaten. And also some of that energy will have been lost by the animal themselves during the processes involved in being alive. On your worksheet today, you will find several tasks. For each task, you are to complete either a food chain or a food web that meet the criteria outlined in that task. So for example, number one is the simplest, a food chain that includes a producer and two consumers. You can choose any animals and plants to create your food web. You may wish to do this on paper and draw it by hand with some diagrams of the animals, or you may wish to complete this digitally. Either is fine, but please upload your work either as a photo or digitally onto the worksheet. 
Tasks one to three are what everyone should be able to achieve. And for extra challenge, have a go at tasks four and five, which have more complicated food webs to produce. To finish up today's learning, I've linked you to this amazing resource which looks at the effect of changes in a food web. Let's just click on the link and have a look at that for ourselves. To finish up today's learning, I've linked in this resource which allows you to investigate the effect of changes in a food web. I've put an instructional video on today's slide to work you through, but let's just have a look at it together quickly now. This gizmo resource is a fantastic way to investigate the effect of making different changes on the different species within a habitat. The pyramid represents the habitat with the numbers of each of the different species. Notice that the producers, we have a large population, then the primary consumers, we'd have a slightly smaller population followed by secondary and tertiary consumers. Within the simulation, and you have a play around with this for yourself, you're able to change the health. So see if you take the hawk and make them diseased, have a look at what impact that's going to have on the things that eat the hawk. Or perhaps you want to say the rabbits are diseased. Does that have an impact and change on what they are eating or what is eaten by them? We'll discuss this in more detail in the next lesson, but have a play around with that. And you can see some really interesting feedback on the impact on the population numbers within an environment. If you're interested as well, as well as looking at visually, you can also see the results in a tabular form or as a bar chart or graph.